All right, well, welcome, everybody. Uh, good to see everyone here. Today we're going to run through the markets and uh, identify trading opportunities in the forex market. All right, we'll start with the euro here. And, uh, you know, often I uh, use some PowerPoint slides, but I think today we'll, uh, to, to kick things off, but I think today we'll just go with the, uh, the charts, start with the live charts, all right? Now, remember, uh, for people that are kind of new to the program and uh, maybe have not uh, been a part of FX Street for a while, what I typically focus on is identifying market turning points uh, and uh, not on not based on conventional anything, really. Uh, a, a lot of people will start the search for you know, start their search for market turning points based on support and resistance. Well, you have to be careful when you talk about the term support and resistance because everybody has a different definition of support and resistance. To some people, support and resistance is, you know, maybe a, a rising or falling moving average. To other people, we'll use Fibonacci retracement levels. Others will use maybe an Elliott wave uh, point, and others might use, you know, pivot point and so on. Uh, there, in other words, there are many different definitions for support and resistance. Okay, so you know, so which one do you use? Which one is the real deal? Well, you know, the way I, uh, you know, the way I came up with the strategy that I use is is by observing real market order flow for quite a long time on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, uh, and specifically in the forex market. Okay. And there we go. Okay, just wanted to fix something there. All right. So let me just give you a again, uh, kind of a, a little history here, and and then I want to not because I like telling these stories because you know I, I think they they get a little boring, and uh, I'm sure you don't want to hear about my life. The reason why I tell you these stories is because this is all about having an edge, and when you look at the candles on the screen, it's important that you look at them very different than everybody else looks at them. If you're looking at the candles the same way your competition does, identifying the same price patterns and things like that, in other words, buying and selling where everybody else buys and sells, uh, there's no edge there, and it's going to be almost impossible to make, uh, to consistently profit, to be consistently profitable in the markets, right? You have to have an edge that gets you in before your competition, when the risk is low, the reward is high, and, uh, and of course, when the odds are stacked in your favor. So when I started out, uh, what I did was on the floor of the exchange. Again, I didn't really know anything when I started. But what I observed for, for quite a long time is three things every single day. It's people trading, prices moving, and orders coming in and out of the market. I was one of those people that facilitated institutional foreign currency order flow into the marketplace. Okay? So... Uh, I want to share that with you today. Now, what you see right away, every single day, every week, every month, every year, is that the movement of price is simply a function of this ongoing supply and demand equation. In other words, a work, being on a, such a big trade desk uh, and having the orders right in front of me, you see that price simply moves... Uh, it, let me give you let me give you the short version and then we'll get jump jump right into the charts. When I took all I would be taking order for order uh, orders over the phone, right? From big institutions, money managers, banks, and so on, right? Uh, when I would take these orders, I would stack them according to price, right? I'd put the buy orders to my left and the sell orders to my right. To make a long story short, if I wanted to be able to identify where the market was likely to stop falling and begin to turn higher. What I'd have to do is find the largest stack of buy orders, okay, below current price, and uh, because that's where the real market demand was that day, okay. If I wanted to see where the market was going to stop rising and begin to turn lower, I'd simply need to look down to my right and find the largest stack of sell orders above current price. What I did next, and this is very important for you to understand, okay? What I did, what I did next, and uh, again, this is very, very important for you to understand, is, you know, after after a while, I didn't want to be on a trading floor, so I started to print out charts. Now, 
would bring the charts to the trade desk, okay, in the various forex markets. What I would do is I would find, again, looking by looking at the orders, uh, let's say I was taking a look at the yen, the dollar yen, okay? I'd pull up the chart, have it in front of me, and it's just a blank chart with price. And then I'd look at the orders, and I'd find the largest stack of buy orders below, re below current price, which is where real demand was in the market, and I'd put some lines on the chart right there. I would then find the largest stack of sell orders above current price, and, and, and obviously that's where the real supply was in that market, and I'd put some lines around that level, okay, on the price chart. So what I would be identifying on the price chart was where the real buyers were, the real demand, and where the real sellers were, where the real supply was, okay? The picture that represented that on a price chart is very different from conventional technical analysis, all right? So what we're going to do today, uh, I was use here at FX Street, and uh, we've got some trades that we uh, identified uh, a little while back, the last time I did a session, so we'll take a look at some of those if, if we get to them, and, uh, and then, of course, we'll identify some new opportunities going forward. So let's start with uh, the euro dollar here, and then um, if you have any questions, you can, you can kind of type away. I'll, I'll try to get to most of those. Uh, as we as we go along, or if I miss any, uh, we'll get them at the end. Okay. Uh, first of all, on the lower left chart here, hopefully you can see this chart down here on the lower left. All right, we've got um, uh, the upper right corner, kind of a 30-minute chart there. Now, whether you make that a 30-minute chart or hourly chart, it's not a big deal. Okay. So one of the things we're going to do. Can, can everybody see that chart? Okay, the Bollinger Band. One of the things we're going to do is, okay, good. Uh, yeah, boy, can we, uh, typically this is a, a daily chart here. Let me just switch this for you. And then some big intraday time frames, all right? And this is plenty. This is more than enough, okay? Yeah, so I must have been looking at some bigger time frames earlier. Anyway, let's, uh, so the, the chart with the Bollinger Bands, what we're going to look for there. Is what uh, at Online Trading Academy we kind of call this the All Star Entry. I didn't name it; one of the traders named it that, and it's kind of stuck. So what we're looking for is uh, is piercing the upper or lower band, and also coming into one of our supplier demand zones. Okay, all right. So let me uh, let me I, let's identify. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Good job there, uh, Janeta. So let's identify the next potential turning point in this euro, all right? So when we look at, uh, we can start with the 15-minute chart. Maybe we'll get some opportunity here. Whoops. And uh, let's let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So let me put some lines around this area, and we will carry this level forward. I'm just going to draw a box just to keep it simple. Uh, it'll really speed things up, okay? So hopefully... You can see me drawing that. Uh, just a second. That's for sure. Because you, you really have everything kind of stacked in your favor there when you get the entry. So there we've identified a, a supply zone. It's really the origin. Now, how are we finding this? Why are we looking at this area as supply? Well, we start with current price. We look to the left without cutting through candles. And we go up the price ladder and find the origin of the last drop in price. Okay? Which comes from right up here. Now, notice in the zone, I have focused on these three candles right here, these three or four candles. And the top of the zone, I'm going right up to the top of this wick right here. Bottom of the zone, I'm putting right against this, uh, this cluster of candle bodies right here. Okay? The reason we do that is because, uh, let's, let's deal with the bottom of the area first. The reason why we put the bottom line snug up against the candle bodies is because we want to make sure that if and when we sell short, that we are selling to a buyer who's buying after a rally in price and, and right into the meat of the supply. It's not a smart thing to do. Uh, that's what the consistent losing trader does. They buy after a rally in price and into price levels where the chart is already telling us supply to demand. By putting the top line at the top of the wick here in the top of the area, 
and our protective buy stop just above that, we're giving ourselves the best chance of the trade. Okay? If you wanted to increase the odds a little bit and make this a little higher probability, I would focus over on the 15-minute chart uh, over here to uh, the left. And we have a couple levels right on top of each other here. Okay. And let me share something with you. We're just going to put these lines in. One right there. And then, of course, we've got the area sitting just above. Okay. So let me put this in. Now remember, don't forget the main point here today. We are we are using simple price action analysis to identify where the real buyers and real sellers are in whatever market we're looking at. Okay? So as you can see uh, on the 15 minute chart, now I've identified an area that's a little bit higher than the uh than the level on this 30 minute chart over here to the right. Okay? Everybody see that? So this area right here is really like this cluster here on the on the 15 minute chart. On the 15 minute chart, we've identified a level that's just a little bit higher. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let me see here. All right. So some guy is. Uh, let's see here. Let me get past your dots there. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying there. Um, if you wanted to increase your odds a little bit, if you take this little area on the 15 minute chart, which is more of the pattern that we look for, rally based drop, not drop based drop, okay, that's what I was saying, you're probably going to increase your odds, uh, quite a bit, alright? Now the other nice thing about this level up here on the 15 minute chart, and, and really pay attention here because this is important, first of all, prices left this level in pretty strong fashion initially, and then of course continued lower. Uh, you can see price attempted to come back up to this area up here, uh, but couldn't do it. All right, so that's suggesting that there's quite a few sellers here. But what what makes this 15 minute level up here, you know, either the circled area or the gray box, whichever one you want to take, you know, one's a little bit uh, probably lower risk than the other one. Uh, whichever, but the, the, the what makes these areas uh, pretty ideal is that if you look on the 30 minute chart to get to this upper level, these upper levels on the 15 minute chart. This market will have to trade through the 30-minute chart uh, before getting to these levels on this 15-minute chart. Does everybody understand that? So you're going to have to trade up through this 30-minute supply level to get to these 15-minute supply levels. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because, again, you see this on a trade floor all the time, and uh, it's so powerful. The reason why it's important is because if prices get up to these upper levels seen on the 15-minute chart, it's going to take a lot of buying to absorb all the supply that we're seeing here on this 30-minute chart, right? In other words, you're going to take, it's going to take a lot more buying to get through this 30-minute level, a lot of buying to get through this 30-minute level to make it up to this 15-minute area, right? Which means, this is the best, uh, important part, which means that you're going to reach these upper levels with fewer buyers on board which is exactly what we're looking for when we're ready to sell short. We want to sell short at price levels where there's tons of sellers and uh, and hopefully, you know, not that many buyers left. Okay? All right. Does everybody under, understand that? Okay. So, uh, yeah, Boyke, if orders have dried up, uh, price would not return. Yeah, well, now, so that's the, uh, well, two things to that, Boyke. Well, first of all, you know, because we have some supply, sitting just below these 15-minute areas, you know, it might take a while for prices to get up there. In fact, the first move may be off this 30-minute level. So if you're sitting there and saying, well, I'm just going to hold out for these upper levels, you know, maybe you risk uh, missing their first trade, you know, which is which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But the, uh, the other thing is I wouldn't worry about prices not reaching a level, okay? You may go through a period where you're finding really good levels and prices just – don't get to your levels right away, but but uh, in time, price almost always gets to uh, the, these levels on the chart, uh, and, and that's for a couple reasons. Number one, you know who has the who has the real uh, significant demand and supply to actually create those levels, right? It's uh, okay. Really, big banks and institutions are the ones buying and selling in heavy fashion 
you know, out at those levels. That's why they have all the money. They, they know, you know, buy low, sell high. That's what this is all about. Okay? And, and, uh, so what I'm getting at is, you know, uh, they have every reason to help price get out to those levels. And that's why you see price, those, so, you know, what people often realize and you always see it after people start doing this for a while, they eventually send you an email. And, you know, the email says, you know, I, I understand the turning points and I, I see what's going on here. But also, they, they notice that prices always get out to those levels. They say, you know, prices at these levels are like magnets. And I would agree with that, you know. Does that mean you take a, take a trade in the direction of your levels all the time? Uh, no, not really. But, uh, but again, so you'll see that these are, uh, okay. These are magnets, all right? All right, let's see. Uh, let's see, some guy is asking, how often do I trade? Uh, in the currencies, in, in one of the, uh, in the, in the account that I, uh, in, in one of the accounts for the currencies, more for the uh, XLT program at the, the trading rooms here at Online Trading Academy, uh, for that account, um, I am pretty much taking trades just about every day in the Forex market. Um, and most of those are kind of shorter term, not all of them, okay? And, uh, and, you know, the winning percentage on that account is, it's, it's decent, it's very profitable. Uh, most, most days, uh, and we track these are pretty profitable days. Uh, it's very rare that there's a, a losing day. But, uh, but the winning percentage on those trades, there are losing trades in there. So the winning percentage is going to be higher on, uh, on swing trading. And longer term trading than, uh, than the, the, the little, you know, short term trades in the room. False breakouts, uh, let's see, what about false breakouts on this level? Uh, I'm not actually sure what you're asking there, Windrunner. Um, false breakouts, you know, if you're talking about breakouts from conventional chart patterns, okay, then, uh, yeah, most breakouts on conventional setups, uh, are going to fail, and that's because many breakouts are into supply and demand levels. That's why they fail. That's why we don't focus on those types of levels. Okay. So, uh, Rob, on the 15-minute chart, why do you draw the supply below the circle top? Well, that's what I was saying. You know, you can certainly sell short at the circle top, right? There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, um, let me just put in some. There's nothing wrong with picking that upper level. Obviously, that upper level is uh, the lower risk and higher reward level. Uh, Okay, but given that that little speed bump is so close to that upper level, you know, prices are very likely to turn. I wouldn't be surprised if prices turned in that gray box, um, you know, before they reach that upper area. But hey, you know, if you're looking for, uh, you know, keeping it really low risk, or I, I shouldn't say low risk, I should say, you know, keeping your stop really tight and getting the extremes, then you would take it in the upper area, right? Okay. Yeah, some guy, I would, I would be. Uh, you, you, you know, trading size and, and all that is going to, uh, you know, I would stick to the markets with the uh, tightest spreads. Okay. All right. Um, I, you know, along with the uh, spot market, you know, you can also consider the Forex futures. I do a significant amount of trading in the Forex futures. Yeah, so Russ, I'm just catching up on questions here. Um yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty big on the futures, as you know. Uh, those are those are uh, markets I focus on quite a bit. Yeah, the the uh, yeah the strategy and techniques don't change at all when you go to the uh, futures and commodities. All right. Yeah, so Windrunner, uh, I think I, I understand your question a little more after you clarified it there, and then we'll move on to another market. Um, so reaching the level we draw, then breaking up 30 pips or more, and then reversing hard. Yeah, so what you're saying is going through one of these levels and then reversing. Uh, the, the way to the way to avoid that, right, or reduce the times that that could possibly happen. Uh, one of the most important things you have to understand is we do not take every supply and demand level as a trading opportunity. You know, every support and resistance level we find out there is is certainly not a support resistance level we would trade. In fact, the majority we would ignore. Okay. And the reasons are, uh, there's a number of things. Number one, and I've talked about this many times, um, we call these odds enhancers. We want to, um, we want to identify price levels where 
prices moved out of that area in strong fashion. Okay? Where they moved out of that area in strong fashion. We want to identify uh, supply and demand levels that also have big profit margins with them. So if you just focus on those two things, you know, uh, probably eight out of ten, every ten levels you find, you're going to ignore, right? You're probably only going to focus on the other two or three, maybe. And that's because if you're focused on supply and demand levels where prices leap in strong fashion and the ones that have big profit margins, that means you're trading way out on the curve, okay? Which means that the likelihood of prices going through that level is decreasing, okay? All right. Oh, uh, Ross, I, I I love the forex features. Um, it it depends, you know. They're they're um, it's it's basically the same market. You're just doing it through the futures. If you want more information on that, you can always send me an email. I can send you some, some pretty good information. Right, Peter. Yeah, we went over that. So remember, we went over one was higher than the other and, and why that's important. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's move on. Okay, so uh, let's go on to another market, and uh, if you had a market in mind, uh, I can certainly bring that up. Let me run through some of these here. Uh, just a second. All right, I see some people are typing in some markets. Um, Looks like this dollar yen just uh, came up to an area here. So uh, let me yeah, let me just stick with this one real quick, and then we can move on to some of the ones you're looking at. So we can see. Uh, let me just blow this up a touch. There we go. All right. Yeah. So let's take a look here. So you can see on this larger intraday time frame in the chart in the lower left corner, this is the da uh, uh, this is the yen. Right against the dollar, we can see that uh, we've had a pretty pretty big drop in price here. Not not a huge drop in price, I shouldn't say pretty big drop in price. We've had a drop in price from this area, and now returning back to this area. So if we come down and take kind of an X-ray snapshot of this area on a smaller time frame, and draw our supply in, sticking to our rules, we're going to take the, the top of the wick and. This area right here, snug up against the candle bodies. Okay. There we go. That should work. Okay. Just capture the chart for you again in case you missed it. So we see at the end, uh, and it could certainly pop back up here. But you know, is this an opportunity we want to take? Well, we've uh, we've got the two things we were looking for. Um, let, let's let's talk about the, the the positive side to this. We've got a supply level, the origin of a drop in price right here. We put our lines in just like I explained a few minutes ago, right? Creating our supply zone and price is piercing the upper Bollinger Band. Okay, so typically that's a that's a pretty pretty good opportunity right there. Okay, so the uh, the downside to this one, and again, it, you know, every every time you find an opportunity, you just run through the pros and the cons and Make your decision. So the downside to this, the only downside to this one is if you, you know, if you look to the left, you see to the left of the, uh, this is another thing that will help you quantify and qualify uh, key levels. If you look to the left of this box, you see all the trading activity? See how there's lots of candles in here? Tons and tons of activity, hours of trading. Okay. One of the other odds and answers we look at is, uh, time at the level, okay? You'll find that your most quality supply and demand levels, right? Price spends very little time at those areas, all right? Okay? So price spends, your best levels, price will spend very little time there. You won't see a lot of trading activity in those areas. And the reason is this. Keep the logic real simple. You know, don't take my word for it. Just think it through, right? If supply and demand is out of balance in a big way, in, uh, at a price level, right, price is going to spend very little time trading there. You're going to get very few transactions. 
In other words, the more out of balance supply and demand is at a price level, the fewer the transactions you're going to get at that level, right? Therefore, uh, the, your most significant supply and demand levels are going to have very few candles in them, not hours and hours of trading here. So uh, I would not be surprised at all if prices drop from this level, and uh, maybe they can come back up here. But this isn't. This, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call this one of our uh, big key levels. Okay. This 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 wouldn't be a, a big significant level for us. Uh, probably a, a much better level where we saw you know fewer candles would be this demand area just sitting just below. Now I know price is pretty far from there, um, but we can we can keep this this level in right here. Okay. All right. Identifying where the sellers are above, where the buyers are below. And let me grab this chart one more time for you. There you go. Uh, let me just uh, catch up with some questions here. Yeah, so uh, Janet, I, I, see, uh, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, so just, just make sure that you're taking, you know, the levels that are pretty far out on the curve, okay? Um, because, it, it, you know, if you're taking levels too cool, close to equilibrium, you know, then price, even though price will go in your direction, sometimes it'll go through a little bit. All right, so the two things that can help you there are focusing on price levels that are a little bit further out on the curve. Those are the levels where more, most, most often price just touches those levels and turns, right? And then the second thing is, uh, I don't know if you're, uh, if you're just trading spot forex or forex futures, um, uh, but uh, there is a difference there as well, okay? And uh, Windrunner, let's see here. Yeah, so using that dollar index is is a very good idea. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so if, you, if you're looking at something against the U.S. dollar, it's always good to look at the dollar index and make sure it's coming into an opposing level. I mean, those are some of your best trades that you'll find. Okay, uh, Janine, yeah, so you're trading spot Forex. Yeah, so you might want to consider the Forex futures also. You know, take a look at those. Um, you'll, you'll find that prices where, where in the spot market, sometimes they'll go through a level. You know, if you look at the futures market, that same level, you know, most of the time prices wouldn't go through that. I'm saying those situations that you're talking about, where price might go through a little bit and then go in your direction. Um, I, I bet if you looked at those same levels in the futures market, uh, a lot of the time that wouldn't happen. Yeah, so some guy letting the trade play out. Yeah, I, I w I'm, I'm pretty big on planning the whole thing in advance and then just letting the whole thing play out. Uh, that, that's, that's what I look to do. Boy, yeah, I'd have to say Forex futures, FX futures. Okay. But it's it's the uh, you know again it's the same it's it's forex it's the same market, right? You're just you know you're trading through the globex system, right? Your orders are being matched on the globex system. Okay, just uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so uh, I think we've identified a couple areas. Remember this this area this supply area in the dollar yen, not a really hot area. I think there's there's better levels in this market. Um, okay. In fact, if I expand this chart a little bit, oops, let's expand the smaller one. Okay. So you can see on the 15 minute chart, if we look up around the 91, uh, 90, 90 to 91 area, this kind of, this, this pivot high up here, see how price spent very little time up here? You know, that's why there, there's probably a lot more sellers up here. Then there are the, around in the 9070 area, this lower one uh, that we identified here. Again, this level's okay. Um, you know, for an active trader, it, it might work out fine, but I'm always cautious of, of levels that have a lot of activity in them where there's a lot of candles. Okay? All right, let's move on. Oh, yeah, I, was, uh, I wasn't going to talk about this one. This is kind of a. Uh, Kind of a funny example here. Yeah, so normally you don't see me drawing in uh, drawing in things like this, uh, but let me walk you through it. Uh, let's do it right here. So not that long ago, uh, we were looking at the I was looking at the dollar Swiss with uh, with a group, and someone said, you know what, you've got a uh, 
big triangle forming here in the dollar Swiss. Everybody see this chart I'm pointing to? They said, which price, which way is price likely to move out of it? And uh, very clearly, the answer was down, right? And the reason is, uh, if you look at the weekly chart down here at the bottom, okay, this is something you. This is something uh, pretty neat that we do. Uh, and, if, and if, you've, if you've been in FX Street for a while, you, you probably know that we're what I'm about to do. I don't think we've ever been wrong in doing what we're about to do. And it's this. It's, it's identifying the path of least resistance. Keep it real, real simple. So when they asked this question, they said, you know, we've got this, we've got this triangle forming. Which way is the breakout likely to, to, to go? And I said, well, let's look above and below current price and see where the path, where the path of least resistance is. Because that's where price is likely to move. When we look at the weekly chart, we said that we're sitting just under all this supply up here. And this is a big weekly chart. However, when we look below current price down in here on the weekly chart, and then look over on the daily, there's, there's really not a whole lot in here to stop prices from falling, right? Um, so that's, that's how we determine that prices were likely to move lower. Um, probably still plenty of room there to go. Okay. Now, if we go down to, because we think that in the big picture, there, there's some room to the downside, okay? Uh, if we come down to a smaller time frame chart, maybe we can identify another level to potentially sell short at. So uh, there are two areas that we can focus on here. Let me just kind of put these in, and then we'll talk about them. All right, there we go. So above current price, so above current price there, we identify two supply levels above current price. Given that on the weekly time frame, we're pretty, uh, you know, we, we just came off that big area. Uh, we're likely to get a retracement back up, you know, in the, in this market now. And if we do, uh, where's the next opportunity to sell short? Well, we've, we've got this kind of rally base drop here. Um, again, while, while this level could easily work out, I definitely would not take this lower one. Uh, and there's a reason why. It's because of that odds enhancer number one. The way that prices declined from this level is a very slow grinding uh, fall from this level. Right, it wasn't a strong move away from the level. Remember that the the stronger prices move away from a level, the more out of balance supply and demand is at the level. Therefore, I would look above this and find the origin of the last drop in price, which is right up here. Now, this is not the rally based drop that we look for. This is a pretty significant drop in price from this level. So, uh, given that this lines up with that larger time frame area. Uh, this is, this is a much higher probability supply level, right? So let me just draw that in, and we'll keep this one. I know we have another session coming up I think next week or the week after, so we'll see how these play out. Okay. All right. Let me pull up uh, another market here. Here's a, uh, looks like there's a trade we have going here from the trading room. Uh, but let's not focus on that one. Let's, uh, let's go on and find the next opportunity. Yeah, so Windrunner, I see your question there. Uh, you, you, you just need to, the, the thing you need to make sure of it, it, it kind of the answer to your question depends a little bit more on which uh, which broker you use. So what you want to do with whichever charting package you're, you're getting, make sure that the futures contract you're looking at is back adjusted. Okay, if they're back adjusted, you're probably getting more real data at rollover. All right, but but you first have to make sure that the that they're, they're they back adjust the uh, right the uh, expiration uh, cycles. So, Boyke, why do you say cautious if levels have, have lots of candles? Well, let me ask you this, Boyke. If supply and demand are out of balance in a big way, are you going to get a lot of trades or very few trades at a price level? Like, how much trading activity is going to go on if supply and demand is out of balance in a big way? At a, at a given price. You know, are you getting a lot of trading or very little trading? Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, very, very little trading, right? Okay, yeah, very little. So, therefore, that's, yeah, I agree. Therefore, that, what is that picture going to look like on the screen? That means you're going to get very few candles on the screen at your most significant level. Okay? That's the point there. Sure, uh, absolutely, some guy, uh, you use it anywhere. Okay? Uh, yeah, must, must, I see your, your question there. Um, I, I definitely use TradeStation for the charts, you know, for the data feeds. Okay? And yeah, they're, they're a, they're a fine broker. You know, with any of them, it depends which markets you want to trade, because, you know, while the front end might be, you know, the, the charts and, and, and the, uh, the broker, you, know, you have to make sure you know who the back end is, too. And, yeah, if you miss a level of M, I wouldn't chase it. I would, I would just wait for the next pullback or next, next area. So let's take a look at this market. Um, let me see. I don't know what this is. Oops. I mean, this is a Canadian, but let's see what we have here. Um, oh, yes, the Canadian. In the larger time frame, we've been down in this big area. I think we're going to skip past this Canadian because there's not a whole lot to look at here uh, in the big picture or the small picture. Let's go to a different market. Does anybody have a market that they really want to look at? Um, we can we can go uh, go right to it. I mean, I, I have tons of them I can look at here, but uh, if you had one. Here's this pound Swiss. All right, so we'll take a look at the... Uh, let's All right, we'll take a look at that Aussie in just a few minutes, and then uh, if we have time, we'll get to the pound. Here's the uh, here's the euro pound right here. Uh, this is an opportunity we had from the I believe this was from the trading room. Again, uh, setups just meeting the target. Remember, we use the blue line for the target, and this is the level. This is our textbook setup: rally based drop. Price comes up to this level, pierces the band, and then uh, obviously target one right there. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the pound. A lot of room in this one for for a drop in price too, so just be uh, be aware of that one. Um, look, we would look for new supply levels to form in that market. All right, let's go to the pound here. Okay, let's pull these charts up and we'll keep going. Jack, what we're doing with the Bollinger Bands is we we want to see that prices are, you know, we would never use Bollinger Bands to identify levels. And we would never just use that Bollinger Band in and of themselves to trade with. Okay, we want to, but but what what can help us and what can increase our odds is, is if we notice that price is reaching a level and piercing the upper, you know, or lower band. Okay, that's what we use them for. Um, let's see what we have here. I obviously, I threw a level in. Why? Let me blow this up for you so you can see it. So we've had this level drawn in for quite a while. Rally, base, drop. Now, what is, uh, can anybody tell me what is so significant about this supply level here? Why do we like this supply level so much? What's, what's so good about that supply level? Yeah, the gap. So remember, we've already said how prices leave a level uh, gives us a really good indication of how out of balance supply and demand is at the level. Therefore, the most significant supply and demand levels are going to have gaps associated with them, right? The gap represent, represents the ultimate supply and demand balance. Um, so, anyway, we have that up here. So this is a level we would definitely want to focus on and, and keep an eye on. All right, we see prices kind of attempted to come up that level a couple times, couldn't make it. All right, um, so we'll keep this on. And, you know, if prices come up here, oh, you need to recapture the chart. There we go. So if prices come up to that level and are piercing the upper band, you know, that kind of makes it an all-star entry, right? Okay. It's not that you have to just focus on uh, price levels that have gaps associated with them. Okay. But, uh, you know, those those are pretty significant levels most of the time. It doesn't guarantee that the level's going to work, but it certainly helps increase the odds. 
So this is the next level on the upside I would be focusing on in pounds. And uh, and as far as the downside goes, let's go to a little bit bigger time frame. Let's go back a little bit further. Okay, so here's the chart. All right, so uh, we, we, we've identified a level above current price. How about a level below current price? So what we're going to do there is go down the price ladder, and we're going to keep scrolling left until we find our the pattern we're looking for, which is drop, base, rally, below current price. Okay. And I'm going to put this level in right here. It's kind of a big area. We could go down to a smaller time frame and shrink that up. Let me grab the chart for you. Okay. So remember, I'm looking to trade the extremes. Uh, that's how you make money buying and selling anything, right? You have to, the only way to do it is buy low, sell high, or sell high, buy low, right? Just doing uh, buying and selling, you know, wholesale and retail prices, just like we do in the real world, only only doing it here in the markets. Um, let me read. Uh, let me read back here. Yeah, Russ. Um, yeah. So so you know. Like, like in our trading program, you know, we have a session, a two-hour session every Sunday, and that's because, you know, obviously that's when you that's when you see the gap. So a lot of times there's opportunity there. Okay, the prices gap away from the level. Yeah, some guy. Um, you know, it depends. Uh, you know, when you're trading shorter time frames, you're probably going to get stopped a little bit more than if you're trading the larger time frames. But if you want to, if you want to uh, cut that down. You just need to make sure that when you're trading in the smaller time frames, you know where the larger uh, where the larger time frame supply and demand levels are, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah so if you took a, if you took a buy at a remember your targets. We haven't really talked about targets too much. Uh, we usually in other sessions we have in this session we didn't talk about them too much. But uh, the the key with the targets is it, it's not that difficult. If you're entering a demand, find your nearest opposing supply level, and that is typically going to be your first target. Now, whether you take the trade or not depends on whether the distance between the two levels meets your minimum requirements for profit margin, risk-reward, right? Okay. Uh, I see a question here. Which 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 FX pairs? Gap pairs? Uh, those are pretty big gappers. You know, I tend to trade the uh, the euro. Probably more than the euro against the dollar more than anything else. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, so you'd have to see how prices, uh, you know, when prices get get close to some of these levels, um, then you want to figure out where the nearest opposing level is, and then that becomes your initial profit margin. So again, you're only going to take the levels that that meet the minimum requirements of your trading plan, and, and you have to, and then you have to make, you know, as long as you're okay with the risk, right, the risk reward, you know, then you take the trade. Uh, but without that. Uh, you don't have an opportunity. Let me do one thing real quick here. So I, I, I just wasn't the clock. I seem kind of out of time, but I just tried my type my email address in there. S side at tradingacademy dot com. If you have any further questions or anything, uh, uh, certainly send me an email, and uh, I'll be happy to get back to you. S side at tradingacademy dot com. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just went with the default settings there. Uh, Giancarlo. All right. Uh, wonderful. So everybody have a good day. Hopefully that was helpful. And uh, we'll be back, I, I think, next week or the week after to continue on. And uh, that's it. Have a great day, everybody.